Hey there folks, I know it's been a crazy long time since I last uploaded a video, and I'm so, so sorry about that. I had no intention of going on hiatus, it's just shit started happening. It's not even real life shit, it's Pokemon related shit. Uh, I've been doing a lot of Pokemetric stuff, um, so that has to do with usage stats, but also um, I've been working on this thing called uh, Stalliness, which measures how stally a team is, and it's actually done quite well. Um, I have a blog now called pokemetrics.wordpress.com um, that you can check out. The link is in the description, but yeah, um, you can find out all about all the stuff that I've been doing while I haven't been uploading battle videos uh, there. Anyway, so let's get down to this. Uh, there will be a battle at the end of this video. Uh, trust me, don't go away. Uh, there's Click on the link in the annotations uh, that I should have put up that will fast forward you to the appropriate place in this battle video. But anyway, let's just go, let's just talk about what I'm doing here. Originally in this spot in my upload cycle, I was going to do a Dream World OU team that would be made in Poke Save Poker Gen. I would play around with a bunch of really cool unreleased shit. Here's the problem. Black and White 2 came out and all the cool unreleased shit got released. So I went from having like a really strong interest in Dreamworld OU, thinking that it could be really cool, to thinking, eh, what's the difference between that and regular OU? I mean, Garchomp's released, Blaziken, I think, no, Blaziken's banned. Uh, Garchomp's released, and or back in OU, Dreamworld OU rather, which might happen on on uh, regular OU too, by the way. Um, yeah, I mean, you have Shadow Tag Chandelure, that's the only real difference. And so I just didn't see the point. And so I thought about it, thought about it, thought about it. And I was like, well, what should I put in that spot instead? Do I want to do another Challenge Cup rotation? And I thought, meh, not really. And then I thought about it and thought, you know, I'm really that not that good of a battler. And the there's two problems. Uh, one, I don't battle enough to get really get experience with the various metagames. Um, and number two, I suck at team building. Uh... Team building is really hard on to do with Wi-Fi because it takes so long to breed everything. Okay, it's fine. You say, oh, this is in Poker Gen everything. It's like, yeah, fine. But still, Wi-Fi battles take longer to do, and it's harder to make adjustments. Um, so what I decided to do was I decided to go through the Rate My Team archives on Smogon and try to find cool teams that I thought, oh, I want to try that out. And so I would recreate the teams on Pokemon Showdown, Pokemon Showdown, by the way, is awesome. I've been playing a shit ton of Pokemon Showdown, which is also part of the reason why uh, you haven't seen any battle videos in a while. Well, Andrew, why don't you do a Pokemon Showdown battle? I hate I hate simulator recordings. Uh, one day, there will be compatibility with Pokemon Showdown um, exporting to battle videos. This I swear to you, but that day is not here yet. Um, but anyway, let's just go back to what I was talking about. Um, so I decided... Play around with it on Pokemon Showdown, learn how to use the team, and then make it in Pokegen and uh, play it on Wi-Fi. With the you all of this with the user the original creator's permission, of course. I'm not just gonna randomly steal someone's team. So the guy who made this team is August. He's a smog on moderator. Um and this is his team, the running of the bulls. It's an RU team, and it is freaking amazing. I have really enjoyed uh, playing with it on Showdown and uh, I, it's, it's just, it's so cool because I, I had this impression that RU is such a stally metagame because my RU team is so damn stally. Um, but then I played around with this team and then I realized, oh crap, no, my team kind of goes against the rule. RU is actually fairly offensive. Uh, this was much more true when Gothitelle was released, although it was so quickly banned that, uh, didn't really change the metagame too much, but apparently it really got rid of Stall for the one month that it was out. So this is August, the running of the Bulls, and I'm just going to do a really brief, um, in-depth on each of these Pokemon, and then I'll go straight to the battle. Um, but yeah, this is what I'm going to be doing from now on. Once uh, an update cycle, so that's once every 16 battles now, um, I'm going to be stealing someone's team with their permission, and I'll be going through it and, um, you know, analyzing their team, giving my comments, and then I'll be using it in a Wi-Fi battle. So... Uh, hope that interests you. If not, I guess, don't watch. Okay, moving on. So, we start off with the lead, who is one of the coolest leads I've ever seen. This is a Smeargle. Smeargle is pretty slow, and I think it's base 75 speed, but in RU, that's actually fairly good for the tier. Um, Stealth Rock, Spikes, Explosion, Spore. 
The idea is against a slower lead, you go for the spore, and uh, then you get a free round of Stealth Rocks, and you have one of their Pokemon asleep. Uh, against the faster Pokemon, hey, at least you get off Stealth Rock. Uh, and now Explosion is what makes this set really interesting, in my opinion. Um, the idea is you set up your round of entry hazards, your opponent switches. Uh, into uh, the rapid spinner to try to get rid of the rocks, and also thinking, hey, I can just, you know, he's down to his sash because, or if he's, there's a good chance you're down to your sash at the point you've set up your entry hazards. Um, and so they're thinking, well, rapid spin KO. Then you go for explosion, and the rapid spinner is dead. Uh, so <laughs> that's kind of fun. I mean, it's, it's really surprising how many things uh, explosion will still KO, how many Rapid Spinners still get KO'd, or at least really, really badly damaged, um, and even in Gen 5. I mean, part of it is that I've got 2v2 attack investment, and the normal type, so I get stabbed from explosion. But yeah, this guy's awesome, and I really, really love it. Um, moving on, we have Henry VIII bot, uh, his Slow King. Now, I run a Slow King on my RU set. I don't run this Slow King. And after seeing this, I was like, wow, I've got to try to use this at some point, because it's amazing. Um, Specs Slow King, you think, Slow King's a bulky guy. You use it as a, as a special wall. Use it, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, no, no, no. With Specs, at least in RU, it's amazing. Um, Surf, Psyshock do great amounts of damage. Trick means you can cripple utility Pokemon. Um, but honestly... I, I don't. I like keeping the uh, the specs on. And regenerator is a great ability to have on a on a Pokemon that you're going to be doing a lot of switching on. In other words, a choice Pokemon. Uh, so yeah, really love this Pokemon. It does extremely extremely well, uh, and it's a great pivot. Uh, and also just a, it's really hard to switch into because Spec Serve does a lot of damage. Now we have uh, his Spinner, uh, his Kabutops ability, weak armor. Uh, it's it actually I've I haven't. I gotta I'll be honest, I never really got uh, this Kabutops. Um, I just have a lot of... I think I actually forget about it more often than not. I find it hard to switch in. Um, but it's apparently a pretty effective spinner. And the idea is you... I guess you switch it on a physical attack. Uh, weak armor activates. Uh, and so its speed goes up. And then you rapid spin on the switch. Or Aqua Jet, Swords Dance... Uh, I guess you wouldn't Aqua Jet, but you could uh, Stone Edge, and it does a lot of damage. It, I will admit the Stone Edge does do a lot of damage. Um, but again, I, I mean, so this is this is your spinner, and you really do need a spinner on this team uh, with one Pokemon with a Sash, and as you're going to see later, Entei really benefits from uh, Rapid Spin support. But I, I just didn't really get to use it well. Um, but that's my failing, not uh, Augusts or the teams. Dogbot! Uh... A banded Entei, uh, Flare Blitz, Extreme Speed, Stone Edge are all pretty obvious. Sleep Talk, you think, why do you have Sleep Talk on a banded set? And the reason is because this it makes this guy a really, really great counter for Tangrowth and also other Pokemon that, I guess Among Us 2 is on RU still. So uh, they come in, you, they, you, they put your Entei to sleep, and they're like, ha ha, I put your Entei to sleep. And so uh, then you go for Sleep Talk, and you have a 1 in 3 chance of getting Flare Blitz, KO the the uh, the grass type Pokemon with a banded Flare Blitz, and that's pretty awesome. Um, I mean, it's only a one in three chance, but it does mean that uh, it's a little bit riskier for your opponent to go to have either Tangrowth, Tangela, or um, or Among Us. But yeah, moving on. Angry Bot, the his Tauros, uh, primary. It's good as a fast physical attacker. Um, Rock Climb is great stab, uh, boosted by Sheer Forest. Uh, the accuracy is less than 100%, which is, I mean, it, you think, I, when I saw Rock Climb, I was like, why Rock Climb not return? It's because of Sheer Force, it gets more base power. Um, Earthquake, Zen Headbutt, um, for coverage, Zen Headbutt is actually really great against, say, um, Zen Headbutt is, I would say, preferred against um, Quillfish uh, over Earthquake because um, you don't take... First of all, it does more damage uh, th thanks to Sheer Force, but also you don't take Life Orb Recoil. Now, the last move is Fire Blast. You think, what the hell is Fire Blast doing on that set? Tauros' special attack ain't that great, and you're not doing any investment in it. Uh, Fire Blast is there because otherwise um, Grass-types kind of wall you, and uh, I gotta say, Fire Blast, 
Fire Blast does an amazing amount of damage against grass types. Also, I guess against Ferroseed whenever you see it. Uh, people think, oh, I sent out my Ferroseed. It's completely a wall this Tauros. No, then you use Fire Blast. Like, oh, crap, now I have a dead Ferroseed. So, yeah, it's, it's a really cool set, and I really liked it. Um, and then, to round out the team, we have Geico Bot, his unburdened uh, Sceptile. Um, acrobatics, uh, Flying Gem, uh so basically, the idea, this, he says basically use this as a late game sweeper. Uh, you go for the acrobatics, get sp speed through the roof, then, you know, Leaf Storm will KO a shit ton of stuff. Hidden Power Fires are for coverage. Rock Slide is a great secondary, uh, attack. Uh, and it's actually really interesting that it's naive, uh, with 32 speed EVs, but it's because in Burden, you, you don't really need any speed investment. So, um, this is another Pokemon that I found a little bit hard to use again, mostly due to my inexperience with the tier, uh, with RU. I haven't played it in a while. Um, I hadn't played it in a while before I did this, uh, before I made this team in uh, Pokemon Showdown and started playing with it. And so, yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, it's, it's it's definitely a good late like game sweeper, but I did I did find that it kind of lacked some of the power that I would think it needed. Um, but also Leaf Storm is good earlier in the game for taking out bulky waters. Uh, so that is the team. Uh, here's just an overview. Now, again, I was talking about the stalliness metric earlier, uh, or you can read about that on my WordPress blog. Uh, the idea of stalliness is that um, the lower the stall score, the more offensive the team is. Uh, and uh, it's basically a combined, it, you basically add up the stall score, you calculate the stall score through a long, complicated process that involves um, looking at the stalliness of each of the individual Pokemon and summing them all together. Uh, and the stalliness is defined, uh, defined through a, an esoteric formula with some modifications. But I gotta say, um, stalliness actually does really well with predicting team types um, and also predicting other things. Uh, but you can read about that on my blog. So anyway, uh, stalliness of negative 1.31, uh, which... The theory is that with this team against another team of this stalliness, like if this team were going against itself, you'd get a KO on average once every 1.21 turns. Um, doesn't usually work out that way, but it just gives you a rough measure. Uh, bias is a much simpler measure for measuring stalliness slash offensiveness. Uh, bias of 1472 uh, definitely classifies it as hyper offense. Again, if you want to read all the details about this, uh, check out the blog. Uh, but all these numbers really don't mean anything to you until you consider them against something else. So uh, I'm showing you my other RU team, the one designed by Jade Hex uh, that I use all the time that stalls like whoa. It has a stall score of 2.07, which corresponds to uh, over 12 turns per KO. And if you think about it, considering I have 80 turn battles that end up being 5-0 victories, that works out pretty well. Um, that team has a bias of negative 1864, definitely putting it in the range of full stall. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's definitely a full stall team. So the point in this uh, little slide that I'm showing you is simply to say that August's running of the Bulls is pretty much the exact opposite of my Jade team. Uh, it, it is it is the complete opposite end of the spectrum. Uh, I would be interested to see who would win um, my team versus his, or Jade uh, Jade Hex's team versus uh, August's team, but uh, maybe I can set up that battle between Jade Hex and August. I don't know. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to go go straight to the battle. And so here's the battle. Uh, my opponent is H81ABZ. We've actually had an RU battle of all things before. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> this was really the best battle. Um, we both make some really weird plays, and uh, they were just playing up old-fashioned mistakes on my end. But anyway, of all the Pokemon that I was expecting to lead with, I was not expecting... Uh, Area Archaeops was probably the farthest down on the list. He goes for a Flying Gem Boosted Acrobatics. Kind of strange considering if I'm leading with Smeargle, it probably means I'm Focus Sash. Um, so I survive with my Sash and just go for the Spore. So now that is the Sleeping Archaeops, and I will just be able to get a free round of Entry Hazards. So as my opponent predictably withdraws, goes out into Aerodactyl, uh, Really strange thing has both Aerodactyl and Archaeops, and so I go ahead and set up the Stealth Rod. Uh, now, the thing to do here would have been to switch out. Um, I guess I was expecting maybe to set up Stealth Rock, uh, instead of, so I went for the spikes. Uh, so now I'm 
I'm the only attack move I have is explosion, and you might wonder why the hell am I going for explosion? There's no reason for me to be going for explosion, especially considering he resists it. The answer is that I was figuring he'd set up Stealth Rock and that I wouldn't be able to switch back in. Of course, I forgot that I have Kabutops. Kabutops, by the way, would have been an excellent switch um, because I could have taken the weak armor, gotten my speed boost. I'm not sure if I would have been able to outspeed, but I definitely would have been able to. Um, I mean, on Aqua Jet, would have done a lot of damage. Anyway, he goes out into uh, Fed and Bliss. I like that. Uh, I, his. Uh, Clefable, I'm thinking this is going to be a really annoying threat. I get him actually down really low with that Surf, and he switches out. I guess he was expecting me to switch out. Uh, no, no, I have no idea why he switched out there. I mean, Clefable, fine, it has... Um, fine, Clefable does have Magic Guard, and it doesn't have to worry about me setting up Entry Hazards. Actually, uh, it doesn't have to worry about taking damage from Entry Hazards. But still, I don't see what it's going to be able to do when it switches back in. I mean, it's going to have to be really good predictions here. So anyway... Get, go out into Entei, uh, expecting the sleep pattern, and indeed I get put to sleep. That's okay, um, for the reasons that I outlined in the beginning of the video, I have sleep talk, and I'm just really hoping that I get the 1 in 3 shot of getting uh, Flare Blitz. I go for the sleep talk, and it selects Extreme Speed, the weakest of the three moves that Entei has. Even Stone Edge has more power, although it does have lower accuracy. Um, Kangrowth goes for the Earthquake. That does a lot of damage, um, considering it's super effective. This is a Tangrowth after my own heart. Uh, I, I I run Earthquake on Tangrowth. I think it's a great move. Anyway, go out into my Geikobot, my Sceptile, uh, and here I think I go for the Hidden Power. Oh, no, no. So he switches out as well. Um, so do a double switch. Go to Henry VIII bot to take the th uh, Thunder Wave. Um, and so now I'm paralyzed, but, you know, Henry VIII bot is slow, so I don't care. So here, my opponent goes out into Clefable. Um, my Fire Blast misses, uh, which is really lame, but this one connects, and I am able to take out Clefable before it can recover up with Wish. Uh, that was extremely, extremely lucky. Now I was going to come Omastar. I... I mean, 4 is just a... I'm obviously going to have to switch out. I go out into... Sceptile, we're fearing the Shell Smash, and then after he does the Shell Smash, I'm like, oh crap. I, 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 my only hope here is that for some reason he doesn't carry Ice Beam, but why wouldn't he carry Ice Beam? And so I'm really worried that this Omastar is about to sweep my entire team. So it goes for the Ice Beam. It's obviously going to take out my Sceptile, and so now I don't have my Sceptile. Sad, sad pandas. But, yeah. So now I go out into Henry VIII, but I'm hoping that I can take a, um, a plus two Surf. I think I probably can, and the question is, can I KO with a um, with a Spec Surf, considering that he got the uh, Special Defense drop, thanks to Shell Smash, I'm like, please, 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 and it does take him out, and I'm like, yes, yes, I'm also, I, I don't think almost done gets steady, but maybe it does, I don't know, anyway, as Elf here goes for Trick, I'm not sure why, he must realize that I'm Specs at this point, um, so all he does is switch out the Specs. Uh, interestingly, he was specs in that scarf, by the way. Um, so, that surf's gonna do a lot of damage. Azelf is gonna go for the Stealth Rock here, and I was like, crap, that's not gonna be good. Because I completely, I completely forgot throughout this entire battle that I had a spinner. I have no idea why. I mean, again, I just, as I said in the intro, I never really felt comfortable using, uh, Aerodactyl. Here, I was like, why did he send out Aerodactyl? This is such a weird move. And then he goes for the Sky Tank, I'm like, oh well, that's it for my slow, uh, slow king because he's got the power... Yeah, this was really weird, but it misses! And that was some game-changing hacks. Um, I'm just gonna throw that out right now. That definitely, definitely mattered and definitely altered the way this game is gonna go. Um, so here I'm gonna call back Henry the Eighth Bot, go out into Angry Bot, my Tauros. Again, it's got the Fire Blast. Uh, he goes for the Giga Drain. That's gonna do a lot of damage. Um, yeah, it gets me down actually really low. Um, so now I, I go for the Fire Blast, boosted by Sheer Force. Uh, and considering this Tangrowth probably doesn't have any special defense investment, it actually does a lot of damage. Uh, gets him down pretty low. He goes for the Giga Drain, takes out um, my Tauros. And now my only hope is for Entei to get the Flare Blitz. If Entei doesn't get Flare Blitz, then I don't think either of my other two Pokemon can take, the po uh, take this guy out. So, I'm, I'm praying here, I'm praying. Uh, Entei's fast asleep, yeah, go for sleep talk. I'm closing my eyes, and I get extreme speed. 
Yeah, that sucks. But I did get its health down pretty low, so there's a chance maybe I can revenge kill with Kabutops. I mean, the nice thing about Tangrowth, I mean, the nice thing for me is that Tangrowth is pretty slow. Um, although Scythebot does have maximum attack invest uh, speed investment, so I would be able to outspeed pretty much no matter what. Here he does an interesting play, and that's weird. He switched out an Archeops, and I was wondering why, and then I realized, oh, Regenerator, that's actually a really good move. Too bad I didn't go for the, uh, the Sword Stance. It's also too bad that my Stone Edge didn't miss. <laughs> if Stone Edge had missed, that would have been great. Anyway, I don't think I could take him out of this range. I really don't. But I gotta try! That's the, my only hope is to try. And I get him pretty low, but he's gonna go for Giga Drain and recover all that health back up. Really wish I went 4x weak to grass. Um, but, the, so the question is, so, Slowking does have really good special defense. So, can I take a Giga Drain and then can I kill with Fire Blast? I am Specs, um, so there's a chance, but I'm not sure if I can spell the Giga Drain. So, health goes down, down, and oh, and I could get paralyzed or I could miss. So this is really risky, and I am biting my nails, and Fire Blast is selected, I, I don't get Parahax, and I don't miss, and Tangrowth is taken down, and that was a much closer battle than it really needed to be had I played better, but oh well, great game, H81ABZ. Folks, I hope you enjoyed this battle. Um, I should be back to uploading regularly soon enough. Comment, rate, subscribe, and challenge.